For many years, I've been telling people that they shouldn't do their own electrical work when they're building a home automation system. I've been saying that you have to go and get an electrician, otherwise you're obviously in danger of um, injuring yourself, but also potentially causing a fire. And if that happens, if your house burns down, for example, you can be fined because you might have undertaken illegal electrical work, but possibly your insurance won't pay out on your house for the same reason. And then, um, just recently, I saw this really interesting video by Rob from The Hookup. And um, check out what he says here. Many people parrot the argument that in the event of a house fire, your insurance claim will be denied if a non-UL certified device was located on the same circuit as the device that caused the fire. But I know that my policy doesn't say that, and I haven't actually ever seen a policy that stipulates coverage based on any certification. If you have one, send me an email because I'd love to read through it. Now this is really interesting and it made me think, what if I've been wrong all of these years? I really want to be wrong. It would be really cool if uh, someone would be able to do their own basic electrical work and then insurance wasn't impacted by that. So I went digging. I called my um, insurance broker and I started reading up on insurance policies. I looked into the, um, the electrical safety uh, regulations in Australia, read the legislation, and tried to figure out what the real story is. Now, I'm not sure what the situation is in the US, and I suspect that in the US, Rob is probably right, and you're probably okay. It turns out that Australia has some of the harshest legislation in the world in relation to what you can do with home electrical work. For example, consider something pretty basic, like um, this power board. Imagine that I wanted to cut this plug off and attach a new plug onto here, maybe to repair one that was damaged or whatever. To make an extension lead, I might want to get a bit of cable and put a plug and a socket on it. I can't legally do that in Australia. That is um, restricted to people who hold the necessary licence, so you need to be a certified electrician. Um, there are multiple types of electrician. You can have an A-grade certification. There's also a registered electrical contractor, which is required if you want to do paid work for someone else. So just being an electrician is not actually enough. Now, here in Australia, the penalties for doing illegal electrical work are governed by the state bodies. And just as an example, in Queensland, if I cut this lead off and put a new connector on here, I would be liable for a $40,000 fine. Now, if that device that I'd modified or fixed or whatever was in a house that had a fire, then I would be up for potentially a $600,000 fine and up to five years in prison. That's according to the Queensland regulations. It varies a little bit from state to state, but basically it's in the same sort of ballpark. So it's in the order of tens of thousands of dollars for doing any electrical work yourself and hundreds of thousands of dollars if that electrical work then results in a fire. And that's before we even get into the insurance side of things. So I called my insurance broker that has arranged policies for me both on house and business and professional indemnity, professional liability, all of those sorts of things. So they know what they're talking about. And I got some advice from them. And I also had a look at some policy information. So let's see what interesting clauses we can find in a couple of typical home insurance policies. Now the first thing to realise is that your policy won't have a clause that says something like, we don't cover unlicensed electrical work. They don't need to because they can cover it in other ways. If you look at the NMRA insurance policy, for example, it has this interesting wording. It says they won't cover any loss, damage, injury or death arising from faulty design or workmanship. And they have an exclusion that says any intentional act or omission by you, your family or someone who lives in your home, any illegal activity you or your family are involved in. Now that last bit is critical because illegal activity includes electrical work if you're not licensed. So essentially what this means is they have a get out of jail free card if you do electrical work. If we look at the Allianz insurance policy, uh, the disclosure statement in clause seven has this thing about malicious acts. And it says, we will pay for loss or damage caused by malicious acts. We will not provide cover if the loss or damage was caused by a malicious act by you or your tenants, the invitees of you or your tenants, or any person who is acting with your express or implied consent. Now, situations where this is relevant 
for example, would be if some stranger comes and breaks into your building and smashes up everything you own with a baseball bat, then you will be covered. It says they will pay for loss or damage caused by malicious acts. But if you take a baseball bat and smash up your own house, then it's not covered. That makes sense. But the sticking point here is what is a malicious act? And according to the definition, a malicious act includes illegal activity. So even though they haven't explicitly stated it here, this is a get out of jail free card if you've done electrical work on your own home and you're not licensed. Or if we look at UE Insurance, this is a statement directly from the UE Insurance website. Will DIY electrical work affect my insurance? If the illegal electrical job is done incorrectly and a fire results, you will not be covered for the loss of your house. They say that very specifically. And then a bit further down it says what is classed as electrical work? Basically it's any work involving electricity, such as installing a power point, replacing a light switch, repairing an electrical appliance, replacing a plug on a lead, installing a ceiling fan, rewiring a room, or installing an air conditioner. Now apart from the specific wording in this UE insurance uh, thing on their website, there isn't specific stuff in the policies, but there are some warnings. If your home insurance policy has a malicious acts exemption or an illegal activity exemption, that's a get out of jail free card for your insurance company if you do any electrical work that isn't licensed. So go and have a look at your home insurance policy and see if either of those things are mentioned. Okay, so the way to get around that is for someone like me to become licensed in order to do basic electrical work. Okay, so what's the path to that in Australia? Well, there isn't a simple path. I would have to give up designing satellites and uh, building robots and making assistive technology devices and I'd have to do three things. I would need to do a four-year apprenticeship under an electrician with a minimum of 12 months of on-site experience. I would need to sit for a licensed electrician's assessment and I'd need to complete a Cert 3 in Electrotechnology Electrician. And that is the minimum that is required for me to be able to replace the plug on this. That's ridiculous. In many countries, you can legally do a lot of things that we can't do in Australia. For example, in the US, I think you can replace a light switch, you can rewire a light, you can replace a ceiling fan, you can do a whole lot of things. Primarily things that allow the power to be isolated. If you can go up to your switchboard and turn off a circuit breaker, then in most cases it's legal for you to do the work on the circuit. If you need to work on the fuse box itself or you're doing rewiring works, then it usually needs to be signed off by an electrician, but any person can do it. That's definitely not the case in Australia. And an interesting comparison is New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand electrical systems are so closely aligned that we actually have the same electrical standards in most of the cases. If you look at the, um, the relevant standards, they're usually numbered something like AS slash NZ and then a number. That's because it's Australian standard slash New Zealand standard and they're identical. The actual standards are exactly the same, um, particularly in relation to standards that cover, govern electrical equipment like certification and all of those sorts of things. Equipment is interchangeable. We use the same plugs and sockets. It's the same um, power standards. But what we're allowed to do in Australia is totally different to what you're allowed to do in New Zealand. In New Zealand, you're allowed to do sensible things yourself. You can do basic things like swap out light switches. You know, all of the things you can do in most parts of the world. Um, from what I've been able to tell, Australia is the only country that I've found where you are not allowed to do anything at all in relation to electricity unless you have the relevant license. Now, I wish Rob was correct, and he probably is in other parts of the world, but here in Australia, unfortunately, we just can't do it. We can't do even really basic things without paying an electrician to come in and do it for us. So please be careful, check the local legislation, and make sure that what you're doing is legal in whatever country or state you happen to be in. And finally, if you're into home automation, make sure you check out Rob's channel, The Hookup. I'll put a link down in the description below. Thanks, Rob, for letting me use a clip from your video in this. See you next time.